Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I want to share with you some productivity tips with the goal of helping you to save time and close more of your pipe drive deals. Because if we can save you time, if we can make you more efficient, then you can increase your capacity and potentially handle more leads or you can follow up with more opportunities at once. And if we can help you to close more deals, that's more revenue, uh, improved conversion rates, which is exactly what any salesperson should be aiming for. If you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like some one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or auditing your Pipedrive account, if you want to learn how to take full advantage of Pipedrive, including how to automate your sales process, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Pipedrive consulting and support options. Now my first tip might be a basic one, but I'm often surprised just how many users or clients we meet who aren't using this feature. So I'm gonna talk about it anyway. And that is to use email templates. Pipedrive gives you this great ability to connect your Google workspace, your iCloud or your Microsoft email account. In fact, any IMAP email can be connected to Pipedrive. And once you connect your email, you can compose and send emails directly from within Pipedrive. And they give you the option to send emails using templates. So if I go to my manage templates here, you can see I've got these various follow-up templates. I've pre-written this and I've actually got a field in here for to put the person's name in here. And I'm actually sharing this with my team. So any of the other users in my account can actually use the same templates as me. I can make sure my sales team are using the correct language and copy. And so you can see today I have this activity. I need to do a, a follow-up on the proposal to Lois Lane. So I'm gonna come in here, choose my template, day one follow up, and there we go, the email gets generated and it gets personalized with Lois's email. I can then click send or I could schedule to send this later. Most people should be using email templates for every stage of their sales process, from responding to initial inquiries, to booking appointments and discovery calls, following up on quotes and proposals, maybe even sending a list of next steps and action items. If you take a little bit of time now to pre-write those emails with your perfect language and tone of voice, you can save a ton of time later not having to type the same thing every single time. I could take this a step further. So instead of following up with each person one by one, if I go to my deal screen, what I might do actually is switch to my list view. And then I'm going to use a filter to find all of the deals in a certain stage. So let's go add new filter. We're going to look for deals where the stage is proposal sent. And I only want to look for deals that are still open. So I'm going to add that condition in here as well. And that's gonna filter down my leads. Here we go, there's about eight deals here that I can follow up on, including the lowest lane that, uh, deal that you saw me email before. Now, if I select all of these, I can send a group email. This does require the use of uh, Pipedrive's advanced or professional plan. If you're on Essential, you're not gonna have this option. Um, but I can send a group email here. And just like before, I can choose um, which template I want to use. And each, you can see all the recipients here who are gonna receive this email, they are still gonna get a personalized email personalized with their, their name. So instead of having to email each of these people one by one, I can use a bulk or group email to follow up with everyone in one hit. For my next tip, I want to talk about activities. A mistake that we see a lot of people make with Pipedrive is they might have a deal a bit like this, where it has this little yellow warning triangle and there's no activity scheduled on the deal. Or you might have deals like this with the little red warning, which says you have an overdue activity. Uh, I'm very used to dealing with clients and I get into their account and I see lots of yellow and red warnings. The reason this is an issue is if you don't have an activity on a deal like this, you see I have no reminder telling me what I need to do next. So if I have loads of deals in my pipeline, there's a chance that this deal, which might be a good opportunity, is gonna slip through the cracks because I have nothing reminding me what I need to do next. So the best practice I recommend is always having at least some kind of activity reminding you what to do next. So for this deal, uh, we're in the contact made stage. I'm trying to book a meeting to do some kind of intro or discovery. So maybe I'll schedule an activity for later this week. Um, follow up on booking discovery call. So maybe I've already sent Jane Doe here uh, a link to book a call with me. Even though the ball is in Jane's court, I need her to book the session. 
being a good proactive salesperson, I'm gonna set a reminder for myself to follow up if Jane doesn't do that. I can't emphasize enough how important this is. I hear all the time from clients things like, our pipeline is full of some great opportunities, but we're finding things are slipping through the cracks, we're not following up effectively, and we're, we're losing revenue. And it's usually the result of not following this best practice and having proactive activities scheduled. Remember, the people you're following up with and dealing with are often very busy. They may be talking to multiple people, uh, they maybe have multiple projects and things they're working on at any one time, so they need some encouragement, they need a reminder of, hey, this is what we need to do next to get closer to making a decision and, and for you to make the sale. So you being a good proactive salesperson should be taking it on yourself to, to do those regular follow-ups. My next tip is not a pipe drive tip actually, it's more of a technique I've been using as I've been doing my own follow-ups, and it's to send personal video follow-ups. Instead of just sending an email or trying to call, I'm sending these videos. And I'm doing that using a service called Bonjoro. Uh, once I have the Bonjoro extension installed in Chrome, or I'm using Brave here, I can record my screen. Uh, in my case, I just use my webcam, or I can do a screen plus camera situation, um, and I can choose my mic and camera here, and then I start recording. Now, what I actually do is I, you can see in the thumbnail there, I hold up a whiteboard with the person's name on it. Because after I finish recording my follow-up message, I can then insert this video into my email and I can include a thumbnail. And I find that people respond really well when they see their name on the whiteboard. It shows that this is a personal follow-up message. It gets a really good click and open rate. And it's a really nice way of cutting through some of the noise. People really appreciate the extra level of care and attention that I've gone to. So here we go. I'm gonna start recording. I'm gonna hold up my whiteboard. There we go. I'm recording now. I'm doing my follow-up message. And then once I click stop, my video starts processing. There we go, I'm recording now. So I can see my video down there. Um, Bonjoro lets me choose these various templates. So I can pick a template here, it's there gonna go. change things like the message on the right hand side. I've got this sample video down below. And then when I'm ready to share this, I usually choose the thumb and link option. I'll copy that. And then if I head back on over to Pipedrive, I can paste this into my email. And so you see here, it's a, it's a little bit small in this example, but it's put a thumbnail in um, of the video. They can click that and view my video and they can see it's it's actually, this, this is pasted in a little bit small, but they can see their name on the whiteboard. And uh, yeah, I've been having some, some really good results following up in this way. When you're working in Pipedrive, if you have a pipeline that's really full, I mean, my one here isn't too bad, I've only got 19 deals open, but it's very common for clients that we work with to have you know, dozens or maybe even hundreds of deals open in their pipeline at any one time. So it can be challenging to know who should we follow up with first, who, what are the really good opportunities that we should be prioritizing? There's a couple of ways that we can identify those. The first is that you could use a filter and I've created one here called best opportunities. And so for this filter, you can, you can define what a good opportunity is for you, of course. What I've done is I've said, show me any deal where the label is hot, likely to convert. So that's usually a label I will put on once I've had a conversation with somebody. If I've got a pretty good feeling like, yep, they're gonna, be, uh, they're gonna become a customer, I've had good feedback from them, I'll use that hot label. If the deal is expecting to close this month, if I think I can get it across the line this month, and of course, I only wanna look at deals that are open. So if I apply this filter, there we go, I can find all the deals you can see here that have the hot label, it's still open, and using my expected close date, it's expecting to close this month. So rather than having to look at hundreds of deals at once, I can focus just on these really good opportunities and try and get those across the line. The other tool or view that we can use is the forecast view. This is a view that, again, I find not enough people know about this feature or use it, but this shows me the deals that are, I am expecting to close this month. And again, this comes from that expected close date field. So I generally recommend once you've had a conversation with someone, maybe you've even had a verbal approval, yep, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna approve the quote or, or we're gonna accept the proposal, you can put a, an expected close date on. I usually use the end of the month. 
Or sometimes people will tell me, hey, um, we're not gonna proceed now, but we've got approval to do this in November. So I could maybe set that expected close date to be the end of November. Here are all the deals that have an expected close date. I can see the ones that I'm hoping to get across the line in October and uh, some deals that are coming up in November as well. So again, I can sort of focus my attention and my follow-up energy on these opportunities where I've already had that verbal approval and they're pretty close to making a decision. Now, any good salesperson or team should always be trying to work on their weaknesses in order to improve uh, their conversion rates and close more deals. So whether that be something like actually improving your product or service, Maybe that means changing your pricing, uh, the packages and, and service that you actually offer. Maybe it's actually how you communicate your service and how you portray value. Uh, whatever it might be, we always want to be identifying for the deals that we lost, why did we lose them? Because then we can actually work on improving those weaknesses. And Pipedrive makes this really easy to do. In my company settings here, you can see I've predefined some lost reasons. These are the reasons I can choose from. When I mark a deal as lost, I can say that the deal was lost maybe because the client didn't respond. Maybe there was an issue with my price. They might have gone with a different option, a competitor. Maybe the timing was just not right, or maybe they didn't give me a reason. Whatever your reasons are, you can define them here. And I do recommend coming up with a definitive list and disabling the free form entry of lost reasons because that really uh, mucks up your reporting. And then in my insights here, I have a, rep a report that shows any deal that I lost this year. I've just put it into the pie chart view and I've segmented it by my lost reason. And so now for the deals that I've lost this year, I can see, well, three were lost for bad timing and two were because the client didn't respond. So actually, if I click on this um, section of the pie chart, I can identify these deals that were lost for bad timing. And now maybe I actually want to follow up with them. It's been a few months. Maybe the timing is better now. So I could potentially salvage those deals. These ones where they didn't respond, yeah, maybe again, I try following up a couple more times uh, to see again, maybe they if, if their priorities have changed. And there's a couple of reasons here. A couple of people went with competitors and there was one case of the price being too high. There's obviously not a huge amount of data here. This is just my demo account. But by identifying what are the most common reasons we lose a deal, we can then work on making improvements to our sales copy, to the product or service that we offer to ultimately improve our conversion rate. Inevitably, we're not going to be able to win all of the deals. Sometimes people just don't respond or the timing isn't quite right. And so this is an opportunity where we can, again, save some time in how we follow up and nurture them long term. What I do is if I lose a deal, I click the loss button up here, I'll choose one of my lost reasons. Maybe I'll say the uh, timing wasn't right and I'll mark it as lost. And what I've done is I've connected Pipedrive to Zapier. Zapier is a third-party automation service that allows you to connect Pipedrive with other tools and apps that you might use. So in this particular Zap, or this, this is an automated workflow, it's triggered via a webhook that comes from Pipedrive. It does a couple of different things where it looks up um, different labels and tags to use. But ultimately what I'm doing is I then tag the subscriber uh, in ConvertKit with uh, like a, a tag for adding them to my Asana newsletter or my Pipedrive newsletter, depending on what it is they've inquired about. And so even though I've lost the deal, I'm gonna put them on my newsletter. They're gonna get some, some content and updates from me. Depending on the lost reason down here, if I lost the deal for bad timing or maybe they just didn't respond, that's gonna tag the subscriber with a different tag and that's gonna trigger an email to go out in three months and six months to see if the timing is right or if they didn't show up for their intro call, um, I'll tag them as a no-show and that's gonna automatically email them seeing if they want to rebook. So rather than me having to do this manual long-term follow-up, I can add them to my newsletter and trigger different follow-up sequences based on that lost reason that I chose. If you've never used Zapier before, it can be a little bit of a complicated tool to get started with. So if you would like help with automation like that, feel free to reach out to me. There's a link in the description below and I'm happy to talk through different automation options. But that's it for this video. I hope you found a couple of these tips useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.